Learning in terms of gamification is the most fastest way we can learn anything. When I was preparing for Kubernetes certification, I used to play a lot of challenges in the Katakoda website, which was available for free. And I used to learn a lot of good practices from them. These kind of challenges will give you a lot of experience in terms of creating production grade applications and managing them. Using codeclone.com and their courses on Kubernetes, you can easily clear the Kubernetes certifications. Few days ago, they had launched a new game called Game of Pods, using which you can create Kubernetes clusters. There are different challenges in the Kubernetes ecosystem. And using these challenges, you will be able to learn different concepts inside Kubernetes. We are going to sign up into codecloud.com, use the game of pods. I'm going to show you how you can sign up to these challenges. And as a part of this first video, I'll try to solve one particular challenge and I'll give you solutions and I will also upload these solutions into my GitHub account so that you can take a look at it if you are stuck anywhere. If you are a fan of Game of Thrones and if you know Kubernetes or if you are planning to learn Kubernetes, I would definitely suggest you to give it a try. Now let's look at what is Game of Pods and let's try to crack a particular resource in the map. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. So the Game of Pods challenge can be accessed from codecloud.com slash p slash game hyphen of hyphen pods. I'll leave this link in the description below. You can click on it and directly go and give your email ID and start playing. So I'm going to do the same without any further delay. Let's get into the game and start playing it. So every game has a time period of 60 minutes and you will have to solve the challenge within this particular 60 minute and you will be able to get a magic phrase which you can put and solve the challenge. So once I click on the email ID, I get a button called play. So the moment I click on the play option, it takes me to the game. There is an explanatory video on how to play the game. If you want to play the game first before you want to solve anything, definitely take a look at that particular video and start attending these challenges. I'm going to go to the game as such. So if I click on the game option, this will load the game of pods map. So this is the complete map. There are different areas where you can go and fix. For example, some of the areas are not ready yet. And there are some which are available. For example, Pento is available, Bravo is available. A lot of these are available. Now we are going to pick the simplest one, which is called the voting application. So as a part of voting application, we are going to get a set of challenges. And we need to create pods deployment services in the challenge and we will be learning all these using this voting application we will get to know how to create cloud native applications end to end with the architectural diagram in place so let's look at it now before i click on the let fix option if you see there is a magic chant so basically once we fix the problem there will be a magic chant and you have to enter the magic chant here and then they say submit and that's when the map will be resolved or the challenge will be resolved for us. So let's click on let's fix it. The moment you click on let's fix it, it takes you to katakoda.com. So if you don't know what is katakoda, I have a separate video on that. You can take a look at what is katakoda. So katakoda in brief is a easy way for you to create a Kubernetes cluster right inside your browser and it is completely free. So if you notice, I have not signed up anywhere with my email ID. I just gave the email ID to get the play button, but I have not signed up anywhere. Now, the moment I click on the voting app, we have the scenario. So the scenario says, welcome to the code cloud game of pods challenge series. In this challenge, we'll be deploying a voting application. We'll be configuring a namespace and we'll be exposing applications through services as simple as that, right? But it, there is a 60 minute time limit. So it looks like there will be a challenge in place because it's almost one hour, right? So let's look at the scenario. Let's take a look at it. So I've clicked on the start scenario option. The moment you click on the start scenario option, you can see the terminal and the Katakodia quiz portal. So the moment I click on the quiz portal, it takes me to a separate window. So let's look at what is there. So it says, who is the true heir to the Iron Throne of West OS? Let's vote. So basically in the game of pods, the Western part of the map is called the West OS, right? So if you look at the map, the Western part is called the West OS. 
if you notice already the timer has begun and this is the architecture which you are going to create so there is a voting user there is a voting service voting deployment then there is a redis server then there is a redis deployment which is accessed by the service and there are some worker nodes as well also there is a database service which is i think postgres right yeah it's a postgres server and also that is accessed by a, a result deployment which is again another docker container and which is exposed via service and the end users uses it so the user is voting using the vote service and the results are checked by the user users who has privileges via that right so we are going to create an end-to-end -end application with these many number of pods and deployments right and there is a check option which will show you whether it, we have done it or not so without any further ado let's get started because the time is already running we lost already two minutes in just talking let me take this particular tab out so that we can maximize it independently and uh, let me maximize this so i'll just do a clear so i presume this is logged into the terminal and we have the quiz options here now what we have is there are different services and there are different deployments before getting into it we need to create a namespace so if i click on this particular box option it says that create a new namespace called name equal to vote so i'm going to create a new namespace kubectl I'll just maximize it so that you can see kubectl create namespace vote. So the moment I click on create namespace, a uh, new namespace gets created. Now, how do I flip to the namespace? I can do kubectl config set context and I want to return and I want to be in the same cluster. So I'll just say current and I will say namespace equal to vote. So this will flip my configuration or the context to the vote namespace now if i say kubectl get all i should not see anything it says no resources found so we are in the new um, vote namespace right that's what we wanted now if i click on the check option this should identify whether i have created a namespace or not so if i if i notice here if i go out and come back yeah it says the create new namespace option is being done so if you notice some things have gone green some things have gone red right that basically means green is all done so we have created a new new namespace now we should be creating the other services inside the cluster so i'll go and create the vote deployment in order to create the deployment i can refer my kubectl documentation so i'm going to say deployment so let's get the deployment configuration so this is the general deployment configuration so i'm just going to grab this and i'm going to create a file called vote hyphen deployment dot yaml so i'll just paste the content here so what does the quiz say the quiz says create a deployment with the name vote hyphen deployment image should be this and that's all so there is no mention of any port or anything as such I'm going to check all the port configuration options so i'll just delete the ports the image is what i copied i'll just paste it here i'm going to name this i'm going to name this particular container as vote hyphen also the app name was vote hyphen deployment so i'll just create my labels as the same vote hyphen deployment match labels also i'll make it as vote hyphen deployment so that way my services can access using vote hyphen deployment i'll reduce the replicas as one so i've created a new uh, deployment if you see it's a deployment i'm calling it as vote deployment and the image is the same which was provided in the katakoda site so now let me close this so i've just saved it now in order to create my deployment i can do kubectl create hyphen f vote hyphen deployment the, the, mo the moment i hit on the create option it will create a deployment for me there is a shortcut which has been created inside this terminal so k is equivalent to kubectl so i'm just going to use k instead of typing kubectl every single time so i'll just say k get all this is going to show me the deployment and also it shows the replica set and others so let me do a get pod so this should show what is the status of the pod if you look at it there is a pending status now i'll just going to now i'm going to say kubectl describe 
pod and vote hyphen deployment now let's see what happens so if you get this particular option where it says zero of one nodes are available that basically means one of the node has failed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reload this particular option and start the scenario from the beginning so the game begins from the beginning now so what i will do is i'll just create the same but i will not show you again but i'll create everything from scratch this time i'm in a new cluster in order to check if the cluster is good what you can do is you can do a cube cuttle get nodes this will show whether the node one is ready or not if you look at it node one is present so if you don't see the node one that basically means there's a problem in the cluster and refresh this particular web url and katakoda will provision a new vm with the node one so that should be sufficient now i have the same file if you look at it i have the same uh, vote deployment.yaml i did not change anything now i can do a create so i'm going to use the shortcut k which is the alias for cube cuttle i'll do a k create hyphen f vote hyphen deployment.yaml so this is going to create a deployment for me and i can search the pods by using k get pod see that now it says uh, container creating i'll do a w which will wait for the container to be running see that the container is now up and running now i'll just hit this now let's go and check if it is good right i clicked on the check button so this check button is going to make sure it is going to validate what all things are good if you notice that we created a vote deployment and it says that the vote deployment is good so if i click on it all the tasks are completed now i can create the service for this particular vote deployment that way we can finish off the voting part now in order to get the voting deployment specific code let's go to the documentation again so this time we are going to get the documentation for the service so i'll search for service so the moment i clicked on the multi-port services it gives me a configuration so i'm going to pick the same i'll just pick only till the http section and i can paste it in my terminal so in this terminal i'm going to create vote hyphen service.yaml because we are going to create the service for the vote now if i click on the vote it says i need to create a new service called vote hyphen service so let's paste the code so the service name should be vote hyphen service i'm going to rename the my hyphen service to vote hyphen service so i've renamed it also i'll be selecting my application which will be vote hyphen deployment right obviously my service should be linked with my deployment that's what i'm doing and that's the last thing so service endpoint exposes deployment vote hyphen deployment that's what i have done also it says i need to create a port which is 5000 which is exposed the target port should be 80 which is what this deployment is going to expose and also node port is 3100 so i'm going to use the node port option uh, by default right now if you look at it it's not having any other option i'm going to add the node port option so for that i'll add something called as type so the moment i say type and if i had node port this will enable the service as a node port option now the next one is port is 8080 which we have already the target port the port should be 5000 right so i'm going to use the port as 5000 and the target port is 8080 sorry 80 and also there is a container or the node port port so i'll say node port is 3100 isn't it so the node port is 3100 so we are creating a service with type node port and we are linking it with the vote hyphen deployment and finally we are adding some port configurations so i'll just saved it now in order to create this service i can do a same create k create hyphen f and vote hyphen service so this is going to create my service in order to view the service i can do a k get service so this will show all the services and see that it got created which is of type node port and also 5000 is getting redirected to 31000 that's what we wanted now if i click on the check option this is going to be marked as green that's what our assumption is right let's see what happens yep this got marked as green now we can proceed to the next option so the next option is creating a service for redis but before that we need to create a redis deployment now i'm going to create the deployment again in this 
case now i can copy my redis deployment from the voting deployment so i created something called vote deployment now i will just call copy this and then say redis hyphen deployment dot yaml now let me open redis hyphen deployment yaml and this time i am going to change everything to redis so i'll replace vote to redis and i want to control it so i'll just say replace this replace this replace this replace this i'll not replace this now what is my image the image says you can use redis deployment as a deployment name image is redis colon alpine so alpine is the version which we are going to use so i'm going to cut the, all these so redis colon alpine is the version of my redis server i'll name the container as redis then what else also we need a volume right so we need to mount a volume into the redis server or the container now in order to do that what we can do is we can use the mount volume mount option so what i can do is i can go under the container since volume mounts are inside the container there is a configuration called volume mounts if you're not familiar you can get the reference to the documentation i'll just say volume mounts under the volume mounts we will have two option one is the name of the volume so the name of the volume is redis hyphen data that's what redis hyphen data that's what is mentioned here so the name of the volume is redis hyphen data and the type of the volume is empty directory and the path is data so i'm going to add the path as data so i'll just say mount path as data so that is the volume mount now in order to get the volume mount up and running we need to create volumes the volumes are in the same level as the spec so under the volume we will have to provide the name of the volume what is the name of the volume the name of the volume is called redis hyphen data and also there was one more thing which is mentioned which is the type of volume so in this case the type of volume is empty directory so i'm going to add a new configuration called empty directory which is going to have empty right so that is what is requested so i created a new redis deployment with mounts slash data and that's what is mentioned here and i'm using the image redis hyphen alpine now let me create this deployment let me save this I just save this particular yaml file in order to create the deployment i can do the same k create hyphen f redis hyphen deployment so this should create a new deployment now it says there is an option to, 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 to unknown field volume so let me open redis.yaml i think the level in which the volume is present i think it's not the same let me minimize this yeah the volume should be present in the same level as the container and let me move here and i've just saved this now let me save it and i'll do a create so this time it should create the deployment hopefully yep it has created let's do a get pod and we can see that it's getting created let's see if it is running yep the redis deployment is also running let me do a check so the redis deployment is green now now let's jump into the redis service so in the case of a redis service now we are uh, saying create a new service so let me copy the same configuration which i had for the voting service so i'll copy the vote service to redis service.yaml i'll open the redis service.yaml and let's start editing it now the name of the service is called redis right it's not called redis hyphen service but it's called redis that's what the challenge says and i'll create the redis here this time it needs to access the redis deployment right and that's what we're doing here and that's what is given here in the last step redis deployment and this time we are using cluster ip instead of node port so what i can do is i can remove the uh, node port configuration and the type here directly and the ports are 6379 and 6379 okay so i can easily go and change both the ports now i can remove the node port and the type 
I can modify the node port as cluster IP or I can remove it. The moment I remove it, by default, this will be created as cluster IP. And let's look at that. I just saved this file. I'll do a K create hyphen F Redis hyphen service. So this should create a new Redis service for us. Let's see. Yeah, so now we have created a new service called Redis of type cluster IP and it is pointing to the port 6379. Now let's do a quick check if it is good. That way we will make sure all these are good. Yep, this is good. Now the next step for us is to create a worker. The worker looks simple. Again, we need to create a deployment. We don't have to create a pod. We need to create a deployment with worker and the image is given here. So I'll copy this image so that I can paste it. Meanwhile, we can copy the same configuration as the vote deployment. So I'll just copy the vote deployment as worker.yaml. I'll create the worker.yaml and instead of voting, I'll change it as worker. So I've changed everything to what hyphen deployment. So that's what they need, right? I need to create a deployment named as worker and the image should be this and that's it. So let me create this quickly. This is simple. K create hyphen F worker. So this should create a worker. K get pod. This should show if the worker pods are getting created. Hyphen W. This is going to show what's happening to the status of the pod. If something changes, it will immediately show in the next line again. Meanwhile, what we can do is we can go and check what are the next steps. Um, so we have a database service to be created and the database service uses something called DB deployment and DB deployment internally is accessing another result deployment. So what we will do is instead of creating the database service, we'll create the database deployment. So that's the next step for us. Meanwhile, if you look at it, the worker thread is running. Let's do a check quickly. So just mark this as green and that way we will be sure that everything is good. If you notice the worker thread is failing because the status is not running. I knew why this is failing because the worker thread is dependent on the database service and the database service is not yet up and running. So let's go and create the database service and then worker thread should be up. So let's create a new deployment called db deployment. So let's copy the same. So I'll just chuck the worker thread. So the worker thread will recover after a while because my database service is down. Now let me copy my vote deployment again into something called db-deployment.yaml. I'll open db-deployment.yaml, change all my vote to db and I'll ask it yes, 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 yes. And instead of this, I need to use the Postgres image. So the Postgres image is Postgres colon 9.4. I'm going to copy the same. And again, if you notice, I should have copied the Redis deployment because volumes are also mentioned. So when you are trying out, try to copy the Redis deployment. But in my case, I copied already the de uh, vote deployment. Now I realize that there needs to be volume which needs to be created as well. I'll copy my volume path so that I can configure that into my YAML file. Now after this, I'll just rename the voting as Postgres. I need to create a mount, right? That's what we wanted. Now let's go and create it. Hopefully this should work as well again. K create hyphen F db hyphen deployment so this should create a new database deployment for us the easy way to look at it is k get pod hyphen w this should create this particular db deployment to running meanwhile let's look at the db service for the db service we are going to create again cluster ip so we can directly use the redis again to use the cluster ip and also we need the post 5432 and 5432 so we are going to use the same uh, this time we are not going to expose this particular db deployment via the service so we need to disable that meanwhile if you look at it db deployment is successful right it's up and running now let's go and create the service so that worker can now work, start working now let me copy the redis service to db service.yaml and i'll open db service.yaml
I'll rename the Redis as uh, DB and 5432 is the port. DB is the name of the service and there is no selector. We are not going to expose any database deployment. So I'm going to use the same 5432 is the port. Let me change it. 5432 and the target port is also 5432 and by default it's cluster IP so it's already cluster IP so this is going to create a service for the database deployment and it's going to expose it but however if I don't give a selector the database will not even use a deployment so I need to give a selector because right now there won't be any easy way for my service to connect with my deployment so in order to do that we have to use the selector anyway so i'll just say selector app db hyphen deployment i'll do a k create hyphen app db hyphen service this should create a new service we can see that using k get service so the SVC is a short form the, for the service and that's what I'm using. Uh, see that this cluster IP got created. Now let's go and click on the check option. So this should now mark two things. One is the DB deployment and also the DB service, right? Both of them are marked as successful. Awesome. Now after a while, the worker also should go to success because the worker thread will now try and access the database. Coming back to the example. So there are only two things pending. One is the result deployment and the result service now if i look at the result deployment it is exactly similar to the voting deployment so i'll copy the same and result service is exactly similar to the vote service so i'll copy the same configuration details vote hyphen deployment to result hyphen deployment so let me open result hyphen deployment if you did not understand any of this till now, wait for a second. After I finish the configuration changes in the cluster, I'll explain you what is happening and how did we configure it. I just want to complete the challenge before time. Now I'm going to change the vote as a result. So everything is changed to result. Now I'll change the voting as a result again here. I need to copy the image. I'll just copy the image from here. What is the image? Code cloud voting app result. So that is the Docker image. And that's it. I am going to save this and I'm going to create it. So k create result hyphen deployment.yaml and let's do a clear get pod. This should create a new result deployment and if you notice that the worker is now running sometime back the worker was not running and now the worker is up and running this is because the worker now identifies the new service and it's up and running because the pods got recreated after a while and that's what kubernetes does in the underneath right if something gets failed it will try to restart there is no need for us to now wait for other services to be deployed you can deploy any services at any point in time Meanwhile, our result service is also good. Now we can do a check here. Click on the check. This is going to do a health check and then identify whether we are good with respect to worker and result. See that both are marked as green. Now the only thing pending is the result service and also this option. If you, serve, if you notice, the deployment needs to be exposed to the result service as well. So I'm going to create a new service similar to the voting service. So I'll just do a clear copy vote service to result-service.yaml again I'll replace the vote with result so all my changes are done here also we need a node port because the port is 31001 this time and the port is 5001 so I'm going to change only the ports from 5000 to 5001 and the node port to 30001 because already 30,000 31000 is used by the word service so we are going to use the 31001 so next step is to create the service so kubectl create hyphen f result create service 
or can you view it okay get service and i can see the new service here and i can also see the port mappings so this should now identify that we have completed the result service as well however if you notice there was this thing which we didn't do but it automatically completed because when we opened our existing result service we already had a node selector and that's what that particular mapping is and if you notice it says uh, the challenge is completed you have completed the challenges and the magic chant to fix it is you have successfully completed the quiz the magic chant to fix is this so this is the magic chant we have to copy and we have to paste it in the page if you remember we had a magic chant page here so i'm going to paste the magic chant and see that it says congratulations well that means from development integration from development integration test and from test to production so we have completed the vote application which basically means we have fixed it now coming back to the challenge as such i'll explain it once again i have taken a screenshot as well in my github repo so you can take a look at the solutions whatever solutions i had typed whatever configurations i have had i will upload it into this particular github repo but meanwhile now i have the map here i have taken a screenshot and now i'll try to explain it now i will try to explain it so that you can understand so if you look at it this is a real world application which is hosting a voting application in the kubernetes cluster so what do we have we have different microservices for hosting voting application which connects to a redis cache and this redis cache connects to a worker service which is again another microservice that particular microservice is again dependent on the database and this database is based out of postgres and also the results deployment gets the data from this particular database so basically the user is going to vote into the voting service which is these two part service is what exposes the deployment to the end user and the deployment is going to persist everything to the redis cache and the redis cache is these two the redis cache is now going to push the data into the worker thread into the worker service and the worker service is going to push the data into the database which is the postgres and when user wants to check the results they can click on the results ui and that can get the data from the postgres directly if you look at it this is a end to end application and we tried to set up this application using kubernetes and katacoda so we learned how we can configure and deploy these in the kubernetes cluster so i know it was mostly copy paste with the yaml files kubernetes is mostly that and that's why you have helm charts and things like that so that you don't have to worry about the yaml files like you saw when you have more and more microservices it's going to be tedious because you will be managing multiple yaml files so the best way is to use frameworks and tools so that you can have seamless automation while creating these microservices end to end i definitely would suggest you to take a look at this challenge and then try out in order to learn kubernetes and do let me know if it was useful if you want me to solve the other challenges which are out there do let me know in the comment section below i'll definitely give it a try i hope this particular video was helpful in solving some real world problems inside a kubernetes cluster as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much